IPAM is an NSF funded mathematical sciences institute housed on the beautiful campus of UCLA. We sponsor programs that bring together researchers in mathematics and other disciplines to build new interdisciplinary research communities. And one very effective way that we achieve this goal is by supporting these 14 week long programs. We're holding this informational webinar on IPAM's fall 2022 long program on computational microscopy in order to provide an overview of this program's scientific focus. And for those of you less familiar with IPAM, we will discuss the format of a long program and what you can expect as a core participant or participant during a workshop. Uh, let me first introduce you to, the, uh, to four of the long program organizers that are here. So hi, so this is John Miao. I'm a professor in the physics and astronomy department and also the CNSI. And I'm a part of the uh, organizing committee. Uh, we are very excited to have this long program at IPAM. Um, hopefully, hopefully we can see you uh, in the fall. Yeah, I'm Peter Binev. I'm from University of South Carolina. And I'm very excited about this program and hope to see everybody in, uh, in Los Angeles. I'm Stan Osher. I'm a professor at UCLA in math and a few other departments, and I'm director of special projects at IPAM. Hi, I'm Diana Dell. I'm also a professor in the mathematics department. I'm also the director for the Institute for Digital Research and Education, and very excited about this program. Great, thank you. So we're going to begin today with uh, John, who's going to share a few slides and go over um, the scientific focus of this program that's upcoming in the fall, and then I'll talk about just the regular overview of long programs at IPAM, and, um, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A. So this um, uh, IPAM long program, pro, uh, we should not propose, long program uh, called a computational microscopy, and we have 11 uh, organizing committee members. Um, you can see the people listed here, and uh, four of us are here, including Peter, uh, Stan, and uh, Deanna, Deanna, and me. So uh, you can see this actually, we are very diverse. We have five of them are women, uh, people from East Coast, West Coast, uh, Middle West, and also from Europe. Um, there are more information can be visited in this website. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of more information there. And then, so today I just briefly go over the, the science uh, and the mathematics. Uh, this computational uh, microscopy uh, workshop, uh, the programs relate very much related to mathematics. Uh, in 1966, there was an um, article written by uh, Mark Kecker, Mark Keck, and a, a very well-known mathematician. He wrote an article published in American Math Monthly, and the title is Can One, Can One Hear the Shape of a Drum? So basically he posed the question, if you hear the, the frequency, the intensity of the frequency, can you deduce the shape from the frequency? And uh, of course, it's a very interesting question, right? And uh, uh, you know, some several mathematicians and they try to tackle this problem. It turns out the Herm, uh, Hermann Weyl, and uh, it's a very famous uh, German mathematician and physicist, he already started this problem. And his conclusion is, for many shapes, one cannot hear the shape of the drum completely. But for some com convex shapes with analytical boundaries, the answer is yes. So basically it has only a valid for certain problems, convex problems. But it turns out that for the computational microscopy, we are actually related to this problem. Our problem is much more complicated. We not only want to get the, the shape, 3D shape, we all also want to get the 3D internal structures from the measured frequency. Um, so here, let me just give you one example of what is the computational microscopy. Right now, the, the field is very broad. I just give one example, okay? So here's, a, this is the first uh, optical microscope uh, built by Robert Hooke, a very famous uh, physicist. He actually, he was a competitor of uh, Isaac Newton uh, yeah, about the same time. And he built a microscope and a look at um, you know, biological samples and uh, including a, a, a piece of cork. And uh, he observed this kind of a compartment. He, he named this com com compartment cell. So the cell, <laughs> biological cell, the term nodule was first uh, adopted by Hooke. And uh, now it, later it is established that lens uh, basically do the Fourier transform. Okay, your eyes are lenses. The lens basically do Fourier transform. And uh, since the early development, this is more than 300 years ago, optical 
uh, microscopy has become very, very important to many fields. And uh, later, all kinds of microscopes have developed, including the you know, confocal, super resolution fluorescence, electron microscopies. It's really, if you're looking at the, the uh, modern science and technology, microscopy play a very, very important role because seeing is believing, right? You, you magnify uh, you know, 100,000, a million times, you see completely different world. Now, there's another thing kind of related to microscope, just uh, um, uh, uh, when you, you can also measure the diffraction pattern, far field pattern, okay? You measure the diffraction pattern, correspond the Fourier transform. That's related to the you know, frequency of the drum. But when you measure diffraction pattern, the phase information is lost. You can only measure the magnitude of Fourier transform. So this is why the question actually, computation microscopy very much related to one, whether we, one can uh, hear the, um, the the drum to determine the shape. So one of my former students did this kind of interesting computational experiment. She took two images, okay, uh, I assume you recognize these two people, and this uh, it's the size of 256 by 256, and then she took a Fourier transform image A, and it took a Fourier transform image B, and then she switched the phase, the inverse uh, Fourier transform, and this looks like a B because the phase from B, now, although the magnitude from A, and you can still see some, some magnitude information here in, in the gray hair, okay? Uh -huh. um, and this looks like the A because the face from A and uh, the magnitude from B. So it turns out your eyes and my eyes are so sensitive to the face, even completely wrong magnitude. As long as you get correct face information, this can be, we can still recognize it. Now this is actually important for imaging, right? If you're imaging, you want to see it. Uh, unfortunately, when you, measure the uh, diffraction pattern or diffraction intensity, the face information is lost. Why you use, use the lens, optical, physical lens, maintain the face and magnitude, okay? So this is your eyes, when you do face, uh, Fourier transform, maintain the face and uh, magnitude. Um, so now, it's, uh, about more than 20 uh, years ago, uh, actually, when I was at the Brookhaven National Lab, I did this experiment. We measured the diffraction pattern uh, from, a pa uh, from the samples. Mm -hmm. And from this diffraction pattern, actually, we use you know, computation algorithms. Directly, as I just showed again, you, see, you know, uh, can iteratively recover the face. It turns out mathematically, there's a, uh, can be showed there's a unique way. Uh, if the diffraction pattern we call it suffici sufficiently sampled, and the face information can be recovered. So, so basically, we are kind of, uh, uh, this example shows that we can replace the physical lens with the computation algorithms with iterative algorithms and can directly cover a face. And the advantage of this uh, the computation uh, kind of algorithms is almost ablation free. Now, uh, our eyes, when I'm getting older, we, we our eyes getting, uh, you know, uh, getting worse and worse. This is why I get a, a far field and near field, right? All this getting worse. But the computation algorithm, perfect lens. In principle, you get all the information. So, this I just gave one example, but there's you know, really uh, broader applications. And our goal, the long program is to want to go beyond the state of art of computation microscopies. The, they are from two different scale. One's lens scale from microns, like the, the diameter of your hair is about 50 microns, okay? To angstroms, which means like the size of atoms. You know, there's optical microscopy, super fluorescence microscopy, coherent diffraction images, 3D X-ray uh, nanoscopy, Electron microscopy and exoclography. And also the time scale from minute to attosecond. So attosecond, one attosecond 10 to minus uh, 18 second. Uh, light travels about a three angstrom per attosecond. So extremely fast. So the goal of our uh, long, long term uh, program is to improve the temporal energy resolution by order of a magnitude uh, while maintaining atomic spatial resolution. And this will allow us to address science grand challenges. And the impact will be transform research in the physics, material science, chemistry, biology, energy, technology, technologies, and quantum devices. This is very broad. It's a very truly cross-disciplinary field. And it can also produce um, multi-dimensional, multimodal, big, extremely noisy data, which requires uh, very sophisticated mathematical models and computation algorithms. So our goal is try to bring together applied mathematician, physicists, the material scientists, the biologists, chemists, engineer, engineer, data scientists, and computer scientists, and, tack and then tackle major scientific challenges by integrating advanced algorithms, 
uh, mathematical modeling, computation tools, big data processing, and deep learning. Right? And I sh here shows just one example. Now this uh, shows actually we solve uh, essential old problems with uh, uh, determine the three D atomic structure amorphous uh, samples. So let me just uh, quickly just show it the, the movie here. You can see the atom actually this uh, uh, disordered atom uh, uh, amorphous disordered structures. Um, for almost uh, 100 years, uh, people try to determine the atomic structures, but uh, using this kind of a computation algorithm, computation method, uh, this allow you know, us to see the individual atoms get the atomic coordinates with fairly high precision, with uh, um, a tens of a picometer positions. Um, but there's still f much room to improve, okay? We, the goal of this workshop is develop a new algorithm for non-convex optimization, uh, improve mathematical models for better uh, uh, simulated simulate microscopy, model new data acquisition procedures, deal with bigger data, design deep learning models for missing data recovery, denoising, and data analysis. And we have four workshops. The first workshop is a deflected imaging with face retrieval. Um, so uh, the goal is uh, you know, bring together ma uh, physics, material science, engineering, applied math community. And the topic to be addressed is this is here, but it's not restricted. So you now we're open uh, for, if you are interested in coming as become a, a core participant, you can also you know, uh, point to new direction if you have some great ideas. So specifically we want you know, how to improve the special resolution of CDI to the atomic scale, how to apply CDI method to add a second pulses. What are the outstanding problems that face retrieval for applied mathematicians? So we want to find an important problem for applied mathematicians and with applied mathematicians help us to solve the problem and how to deal with the bigger data from X-ray free electron lasers. This X-ray free electron laser is a very expensive machine. Each one costs a billion dollars. Uh, there's uh, you know, machines in, X, in Europe, in, Europe in, in the US and also in, in uh, Asia. That's uh, more, many countries are building these X-ray free electron lasers. And the second workshop is on the mathematical advances for multi-dimensional microscopy. And so this work is uh, done by uh, Peter Benev and uh, Paul Voice Group, um, the collaboration. So they actually using so-called so the, um, the pixel-wise registration of a time series low dose image. Here's just a low dose image of silicon. You can see this is silicon atoms. It's a little noisy here, okay? Um, it's a dumbbell uh, shape. And then using this uh, pixel-wise uh, uh, registration of the time series, and uh, you can see the uh, the, uh, the right shows this after the uh, pixel-wise registration. You can see atom can be much more accurately determined. The precision is about you know uh, x and y's. X is uh, 0.86 picometers, y is 0.72 picometers. So one picometer is 10 to minus 18 meters. So it's very very accurate. Um, so I, I just showed one example. So the goal of the workshop is to bring together applied math, material science, microscopy, and data science communities. And we want to you know, discuss and ho hopefully address the following topics, how to capture 3D atomic motion during the glass transition, how do local atomic scale extended mesoscale structure and interactions determine the material properties and functions? What are the outstanding problems in multi-dimensional microscopy for applied mathematics? And the third workshop is the cryo electron microscopy and beyond. Now here, here shows the image later the, the COVID-19. Uh, uh, this is a model for the COVID-19 uh, virus. And especially I want to pay attention to this spike uh, glycoproteins. Okay, these spike proteins can, uh, can attach to the host cell and fuse and then entry, enter in the, the host cell. And uh, that's kind of then can cause a damage, right? And this uh, actually the structure was soft, first solved uh, in early 2020. The paper was submitted to science and the, from submission to publication just took uh, nine days, actually enormous. So here shows the structure of the, uh, the spike protein, the, the spike uh, glycoproteins. And this protein actually play a very important role. This, uh, everybody, but most of you use the mRNA vaccines. The mRNA vaccines is, uh, the vaccines just generate these uh, spike uh, glycoproteins. So allow your uh, the body to have this immune system, the, 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 the build up the immune system against these uh, spike glycoproteins, okay? And in a matter of fact, one of, uh, 
one of the co-organizers of the uh, workshop uh, spent a you know, uh, couple of years working with Moderna to develop these vaccines. And, and our, the goal of this workshop is how to determine the uh, macromolecular, macromolecular structure in situ at atomic resolution. So, so far, cryem has to purify the protein, like, like this virus, you have to purify the virus and then get many, many identical copies, to average get a, you know, atomic, near atomic resolution structures. But inside a cell, it's much more complicated. How can this is called in situ? <laughs> this has become much more complicated. And how to develop machine learning model to deal with extremely noisy data. The, the, the problem for the biological sample is very noisy. And what kinds of generative prions are best suited for applications in cryo? So I just listed the three topics here, but this is not restricted, you no. Know? And the, the final workshop is a multi-model imaging with deep learning and, and modeling. Here shows the example on the combining CDI with a vector tomography. Now the tomography, many of you are familiar with, is a 3D reconstruction, right? You go to the hospital, the uh, CT, computer tomography, that's a tomography, 3D reconstruction of your, um, no, the patient in internal structures. But uh, in order to get a vector, like this is a magnetization field, you can see the, the, this arrow here. So we require to develop this vector tomography and uh, Stan and uh, my group have been developing also this vector tomography can even get a better resolution when this published in 2017. So there's, uh, we think there's a lot of uh, um, loom between the uh, applied math and physics and material science. We can have a lot of uh, important problems to be addressed by this cross-disciplinary collaborations. So the topics to be covered is what are the science grand challenges that can only be addressed by multi-model and multi-scale microscopy imaging? What are mathematical model computation tools need to be developed to achieve these challenging goals? How to develop deep learning models to analyze big data from different imaging modalities at different land scales? So here, just to summarize, I have the four um, you know, workshops, international workshops. I have the, all the organizers. The organizers really are the leaders, uh, international leaders in the each individual fields. And again, so this is the final, uh, again, also first slide. So more information can visit this website. Okay, or oh, there's much more information. So I'm gonna stop here. Great, thank you, John. As I mentioned prior, that I'm gonna uh, discuss uh, how we work through our long programs, just a general format of a long program. And, um, and then we'll open it up for some Q&A. So let me start sharing these slides. Uh, so before, um, you know, and during your visit at IPAM, you're gonna be supported by um, great IT financial and program staff members. And I want to um, introduce you also to the IPAM Scientific Directorate who you'd be um, working with as well. We have the director of IPAM, Dr. Dimash Shatenko, Deputy Director is Dr. Christian Rash. I am Associate Director. And as you've already uh, been introduced to Dr. San Osher, um, who's the Director of Special Projects at IPAM. Um, our program staff, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, put out some of the names of the people that you're going to be hearing from via email or um, really working with more one-on-one -on -one when, you, when you get here. So um, a couple of just the general format for a long program. Uh, the long programs, again, have several complementary streams. As John just um, explained with this program, we have people from uh, material science, data science, mathematics, uh, biochemistry, and so on coming in. Um, and so we really just wanna put them all together for, um, in order to build a very fruitful interaction throughout the program and, and address the goals that uh, the long program organizers have set out. Uh, long program is 14 weeks long. Um, and it runs from say mid-September to mid-December. The, uh, the dates for this long program that we're talking about, it begins on September 12th with an opening day. And then we have a week of tutorials, which again, these represent the different streams of the program um, during this first week. Uh, this is really meant for everyone that's gonna be here for um, as, as core participants, uh, because it really helps set the stage for everyone to you know, have the same, uh, say, language, especially if we have, you know, mathematicians speaking to um, material scientists, for example, chemists speaking to mathematicians. We want to make sure that um, everyone gets an, a chance to introduce their, um, their angle, their side of the problem. Uh, then we move on with the four workshops that, um, that John has already introduced. Please note that these workshops are not 
again, they're not standalone workshops, they're one week long, but they're part of the long program. So it just helps to give us just a better perspective of the entire program, but they are spread out during those 14 weeks. And then the long program ends with a culminating retreat at Lake Arrowhead. Um, this is in December, uh, the very last week. So we leave from IPAM and go to Lake Arrowhead. So the um, core participants, what you can expect here is that generally we have 40 to 45 core participants stay at IPAM for the length of the program. The length of the stay for some may vary. So uh, some of you on the call already recognize your name here that um, we've, we've, um, we've already spoken at least via email or um, Zoom to discuss your specific uh, dates of participation, your stay. Um, and we are, we, the long program organizers in IPAM uh, recognize that for those of you with uh, labs at your home institution, it may not be uh, feasible to stay during the entire program. So we'll work with you to be here for as long as you can. Um, and the, these are not, the core participations are not open for registration. Um, anyone who's interested is either invited by the organizers, these are more the, the more uh, senior um, researchers, or, uh, or you need to apply and will be selected by the organizing committee and IPAM. Uh, the core participants again represent each stream of the program and we have senior scientists, more senior scientists, uh, more junior participants as well. And we really do try to um, make sure that we work with the uh, organizers so that all the junior participants here are well mentored and guided throughout the, throughout the program. Um, working groups are generally formed um, at the very end of the tutorials week, so on Friday or the following Monday. Um, so that you all have a, a session where you get to discuss, um, again, some of the working groups. Uh, I know John has already uh, discussed at least four, but any other ideas that you have, this is a good time to, um, to just have this discussion with the rest of the organizers and we can help facilitate that. Um, and you'll be meeting with your working groups uh, regularly. There's also a seminar series that we put on while you're here at, uh, at IPEM. Um, so for example, the program that's going on now, uh, this spring, uh, the uh, junior participants are holding the seminar on Tuesdays and Thursdays and they have two talks a day. Uh, so whatever kind of schedule your group wants to uh, work with, um, Ginger Williams is on this call and I will be helping you with that. Um, as far as funding goes for core participation, we offer long-term housing uh, funding and travel to uh, get here at least once and you're automatically registered for all the workshops that are um, held during your stay. So um, I know that some of you might be interested um, to, to be here, say for the uh, tutorials week and then fly back home and come back. Uh, we'll have to talk a little bit more about that uh, more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, we don't generally offer travel more than once, uh, but we can definitely help you with housing while you're here. So we, we can talk about that more um, as you start communicating with me. And for workshop participants, um, again, those, this is open registration. So you can go ahead and register for these now. And you can also apply for funding, uh, at least for lodging, uh, to attend a, a specific workshop. Um, you have an opportunity to give a poster presentation during the first day of the workshop, which is then followed by a reception. And of course, engage with all the researchers here at IPAM. All the workshop talks um, are recorded. Well, those that are, um, uh, allowed by each speaker. We give each speaker the, the right to uh, refuse a recording and posting, but these are uh, put up on our website so that you can um, see those later as well. And each workshop also has a program staff member that helps with its logistics so that you know that you're gonna be receiving emails from these people. Here are for workshop one, we currently have uh, Roland McFarland um, as the program staff member assigned to workshop one. Um, we are currently hiring a new program staff member. So uh, whoever this new person is, will be taking uh, lead on workshop one. Workshop two is Ginger Williams, who is also the uh, long program um, program, the long program program staff member. And uh, Roland also has workshop three and Brianna Masella has uh, workshop four. So just so that you, you know, see their names here because you'll probably be uh, getting emails from, from all of them. Okay, so here's our homepage of uh, IPAM. You can either go to programs, long programs, and then select your program. But currently, because uh, the fall 2022 long program is up and coming, uh, it's on the homepage 
uh, if you scroll down at the bottom. So when you go into the long program webpage, you'll see an overview, um, sort of an abstract up here at the top, all the organizing uh, committee members. There's an activities tab, informational webinar and application tab. The informational webinar is, um, this is where we're gonna po post this recording. So you'll see this here later. Um, the application tab that you see on this page here, this is the application for core participation. So uh, you click here um, on the top left to apply for core. You'll have a couple of questions there to answer, including what your hopeful participation dates are. You will ask at least two um, references to submit letters on your behalf. And um, you'll also have to submit your CV. And if, you, if you're interested though in applying to only say a single workshop, um, then we ask that you um, go onto this activities tab and click on a specific workshop that you're interested in. Say, for example, you're interested in workshop two. Workshop two has its own um, web page with overview, lodging information, and an application and registration tab for that workshop. So um, if you're interested in a specific workshop, you can apply that way as well. And then you can go back to the long program web page by clicking up here. So I just wanted to go over that so that you see that there are, again, differences between, say, um, applying for a given workshop or applying as, as core. Those are, those are the options that you have on our webpage. Great. Well, thank you again to John. And let's go ahead and open it up for any Q&A. And also, like a stand, Peter, and at the end, if you any, want to add something more, no, go ahead. If you want to. Well, you we talk a little bit about the kind of mathematics that might pop up. Uh, and if it's appealing to people, there's a lot, you know, tremendous amount of work and done in image processing and uh, signal processing. And uh, and now deep learning has uh, made lots of things possible, wasn't there before. So uh, state-of-the-art algorithms will, uh, you know, be tried to be used for these problems. And there's lots and lots of open questions. Uh, so uh, if you like that sort of thing, it's very appealing and uh, very fashionable right now. This is a great application of those ideas. Okay. I can just say a few words. So uh, I want to say that actually electron microscopy is very good uh, example for really tough mathematical pro uh, problems because uh, usually what happens uh, there, it's much more difficult than the standard uh, algorithm. For example, uh, the scanning transmission electron microscopy, it, it has uh, the, the scanning process is, uh, has a lot of movements inside. So in addition to the, uh, you have the motion mo noise. So, and this is often much more severe than, uh, than actually the, the noise from the instrument and uh, from the interactions. So that's, that makes the problems much more interesting. And I think that it's a great uh, subject to, to work on. Okay, that's it. I don't think I have anything too much to add um, other than maybe if there's some non-math folks in the audience just to uh, say how amazing IPAM is and uh, the directors and the organizers um, are all really great people. And I'm also actually in Lake Arrowhead. So, the, uh, the very end trip uh, to be at the lake is also an added bonus, but it's a great institute. It's very, very well known. So if you're not from the math world, you should definitely do some digging on the website um, and see what amazing programs there have been. Okay, and I'll, I'll add a little bit more to the, um, to the Lake Arrowhead week. Uh, as I mentioned, that's, it's a culminating retreat that happens at the very end of your uh, workshop in the 14 weeks. But um, we also invite uh, workshop, but excuse me, we actually invite long program participants back for, um, select long program participants back for reunion conferences. Um, so we have two reunions. Um, for, for this group, it would be in spring of 2024 and spring of 2025. So it's a year and a half after um, meeting in, here in person. So you'll meet in fall 2022, go to um, Lake Arrowhead in December of 2022, and then are invited back for a reunion, spring 2024 and spring 2025. Uh, so, and, and the, the groups are expected to say get a, a bit smaller um, by the second reunion, but it's really a great time to come back and um, 
and meet with your uh, collaborators and update each other on the, the work that happened during your long program and that continues to, to happen. And it's also a really great time to, um, to speak with uh, directors at IPAM um, in order to discuss future projects, workshops or long programs that you may also be interested in organizing here as well. So it's really uh, quite a great time. Oh, great. So the first question here is, uh, thank you, Christian, is uh, could you get into some more detail on what is planned during the time in between the workshops? Yes. So in between workshops, that's that's a great question. It really, um, it, it is the time that um, most participants have mentioned that it is, it is the most uh, fruitful time of your um, of your stay at IPAM because the workshop weeks, uh, again, they're really great, but they're very busy, right? So you have say about 20 to 36 speakers during a week. Um, so it's a very jam-packed schedule. Um, and you do get a chance to speak to um, the researchers outside of that time, but the core participants are here during the entire time. And you're actually uh, engaged in workshop groups in, in, um, in focus groups per se. And um, we arrange for you to meet regularly. Um, you also have the seminars and so on. So this is the time where most of you are really getting together to work so that when you come uh, for the, when we take you to the culminating retreat and you start working on this white paper to really put everything together from the entire um, long program, um, you, can, you can speak back to all of the work that your focus groups did. Uh, so this is, this is in general for um, what is done during long programs at IPAM. But I don't know if any of the panelists want to um, add to this. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, IPAM has a great uh, record of uh, uh, advancing science using mathematics. For example, uh, we claim credit for something called compressive sensing, uh, which was uh, a real, made a real impact in science about 15, 20 years ago or less. And that was done during a collaboration here by uh, people from various different institutions. We also had one of the first uh, summer programs or long programs on AI, would you believe? So uh, we arrogantly claim that we helped kick that incredible subject off, artificial intelligence. Uh, so, and other areas of influence in material science, uh, graphics, uh, you, you name it. Uh, so we love talking to scientists and finding out what the problems are. And uh, we love it when they use our algorithms. So it's uh, a very nice atmosphere, very interactive. And once you are here, we promise you almost no administrative nonsense. I mean, the staff is incredible. And uh, you can just relax and do your research. And you're living in Los Angeles, which uh, has its virtues. It's 80 degrees right now, sun shining, humidity is about zero. Right, and and to add to that again, uh, going back to the the question of what you know, going into what more detail about what is done during um, off workshop weeks is, if you're a core participant, um, then you um, are provided with an office uh, in the IPAM building, and IPAM has its own building. So um, we are not with the math department, or we're not with any other department. We have our own building on the UCLA campus. Um, so you're provided with an office space, and again, just to facilitate that that. Um, meeting with your, um, with your group members, with your collaborators while you're here. And it's a beautiful building with a huge, uh, I don't know, hallway or something, which people hang out and work with each other. Uh, it's a Frank Geary building. He's a famous architect. He's still around. Every once in a while, he shows up and looks at his building. Uh, it's uh, really a great place to work. So do you ask a question about right now? What are the kind of the, 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 the ratio of the non-physics, uh, physics and uh, math and the non-other field. It turns out so far, actually, uh, I mean, our speakers, I think great, most of the invited speakers basically accept our invitation and uh, um, many of them non-mathematician. Um, so in terms of speaker wise, I think the, the ratio is great. Uh, I think uh, maybe a ma applied mathematician, I was overall maybe one third and then two thirds is, no, physics, material science, uh, chemistry, uh, engineering, and uh, um, maybe some uh, computer science. Great, yes. And I, I'll also add that um, I actually I spoke to um, an applicant uh, a couple of weeks ago over Zoom, and uh, they were interested in, again, uh, being here as a core participant, but, um, you know, have their lab to tend to and so on. 
And so we discussed, you know, being here for about four weeks early on, and then the rest of the time, um, uh, maybe flying back and forth another time, but um, it would be in in your interest as as um as a um, someone who has a lab that has to like be away to uh, maybe f get into one of those uh, groups um, that are formed earlier on, and then um, throughout just you know stay in touch with um, the rest of the people here at, at our core. So there are definitely ways that you can keep up the collaboration throughout the program if you're not able to be here in person. Um, but again, this is where uh, you and I can talk a bit more um, after you apply and um, your application materials are brought forth with the committee and, and IPAM. Oh, great question. What do you typically hear back from an application? Yeah, so um, applications are, are open until April 18th. Um, we will, I'll say shortly after the deadline, let's put it that way. Um, we're, we are constantly reviewing applications. Um, we've been reviewing the applications that are there now. Um, the issue with, uh, it, the problem with issuing so many acceptances earlier on is that again, there is a limited space. We have 40 to 45 core participants and we wanna make sure that we have uh, representation among all the uh, scientific fields. And so, um, you, generally for core, we do ask that applications are turned in, you know, um, at, um, early, but um, we we generally wait until the deadline to let you know uh, whether or not you're accepted. Uh, it might be a little different for those of you who are international because um, we want to make sure that you have enough time to get your visas and all that squared away, which again, IPEM helps with as well. All right. Okay, well, thank you uh, to all the panelists here on the call and everyone who joined us. Um, please do let your friends and colleagues know who are not able to attend that this will be um, uploaded to the webpage and we'll send out an email as well when this is done. So thank you all very much for, for attending today and I hope to see your applications um, and I hope to meet you here in person at IPAM in the fall.